The Nimrod Castle, which translates as Castle of the Large Cliff, is an astonishing ancient fortress. And although this awe-inspiring site has predictably been dated to the medieval era, we feel that due to the many anomalous megalithic blocks within its construction, it is far older than this and undoubtedly a remnant left by a highly advanced civilization now unfortunately lost to history. This due to academia's funded and often deliberate ignorance. Many of the oldest blocks present within the structure, for example, are all upwards of 10 tons, with some of the heaviest recognized as being over 40 tons in weight. How modern curators and academics alike can attest to these ruins having been created by our tremendously less capable medieval ancestors, we feel, is preposterous. According to those in the so-called No, the fortress was created from scratch during the Ayyubid dynasty, placed within the 12th and 13th centuries. The dynasty undoubtedly existed, this we do not deny. We also do not disagree with the posit that the dynasty ruled large parts of the Middle East during these centuries. However, we suspect that, just like the many other unexplainable ancient advanced ruins found throughout the world, these more recent ruling ancestors, and indeed the large array of ancient artifacts which they left, creating an archaeological legacy, has been used to conveniently date and explain this miraculous structure away, avoiding the controversial truth which is clear for all to see. The fortress is situated on the southern slopes of Mount Hermon, upon a ridge that rises over 2,600 feet above sea level overlooking the Golan Heights. We feel that due to its strategical location, much of the structure was rebuilt upon. This task completed with the purpose of guarding a major access route. We believe that upon the leader of this dynasty, Al-Aziz Uthman, Discovering the enormous, impenetrable polygonal masonry still in existence within the walls of the site, that were left by a people who, at some point within antiquity, mysteriously vanished. This leader made the logical decision to build upon the impressive remnants, with these walls being reused, utilized for a more modern fortress. This second phase, predictably made with far smaller blocks, and thus, can be easily explained as medieval architecture. A fortress could have indeed been its original purpose, this due to its strategically placed location. Indeed, other ancient, advanced, seemingly impenetrable fortresses can be found in other places within the world, such as Sacsayhuaman. Although its true grandeur or its initial advanced builder's intention for the structure may take tremendous, meticulous, alternative research to eventually unravel. Furthermore, intriguingly, the enigmatic yet highly recognizable shape of this initial stonework is also present at another site, possibly a number of other sites, although in particular within Jerash, a site currently claimed as Roman. Who built the Fortress of Nimrod? How can academia claim that this site was built by the Ayyubid dynasty, while another ruin, unquestionably constructed with the same form of megalithic blocks, seemingly dating for the same era, be that of the Romans? We feel that these two sites, each containing the same building features, yet claimed as completely different civilizations work, both placed within our more recent history, yet in vastly different centuries is clear evidence of academic fallacy, evidence of their explanative contradictions when it comes to the many currently controversial ancient ruins of Earth. Nimrod Fortress is yet another jewel in the crown of a civilization currently lost to history. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. We have often covered the astonishing ancient feats of engineering that went into the construction of the temples at Baalbek within modern-day Lebanon. The enormous ancient megalithic blocks that no matter how adamantly certain individuals claim as relatively recent Roman achievements cannot be explained. 
how the blocks were cut with the tools available during this claimed era, how they were moved to the location they are today found upon, or indeed any idea as to the techniques or methods utilized to have once perfectly placed them within the ancient structures. Additionally, there are many other ancient structures nearby that, although currently not recognized as having the same enormous stones used in their builds, still possess impressively sized megalithic blocks, masterfully completed architectural artwork, and other anomalies, which may link the sites to many other ancient works all over the globe. One of these sites in particular is known as the Niha Temples, Niha being a village in the Beka Valley within Lebanon, and although the ancient ruins are clearly of an advanced nature, they are, just like the inexplicable ruins of Baalbek, claimed as Roman. Interestingly, in addition to the Niha temples, scattered around the area are a number of mysterious altars that are precisely aligned with the summit of Mount Hermon. An additional fact of interest is that this location is recognized as 33 degrees longitude, 33 degrees latitude. Is this possibly the reason for this degree's significance within Freemasonry? Is this location why they are so interested in the geometry of the 33rd degree? Many legends surround this site. In particular, they involve a group of entities known as the Watchers, a purported group of supernatural beings who are known by many names, the Nephilim, sons of God, giants, fallen angels, egregores, or indeed demons. They are spoken about in the Dead Sea Scrolls, Books of Enoch, Scripture, among many other ancient texts. We find it intriguing that this location, which clearly possesses large numbers of enigmatic and incredibly ancient structures, which additionally display stonework carved and created in the same form as many other ancient sites, also within the Temple of Niha, and possibly within many other of the stonework of the surrounding altars, are protuberances. These mysterious notches, which are also interestingly known as boss marks, another possible connection to this supernatural group, are found throughout the world within the many unexplained ancient ruins, such as ancient Peru, the pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, and many, many more. Predictably, however, these ancient altar sites are rarely investigated or indeed shared by academia. Quote, During the summer of 1934, Dr. Stuart Crawford and Reginald Haupt led a small expedition in which we studied the ancient shrine surrounding Mount Hermon. We located many ruins, and in each case, the shrine was so precisely oriented that when the devotees were at them, they faced a chief sanctuary, located upon the highest of the three peaks of Hermon. This rare insight was written by Reginald Haupt last century. We strongly suspect that when the now well-established Masonic influences recognized the importance of these sites, they were quickly shut off from any further public academic investigation. Who were the Watchers? Were they real entities? If so, are they still in existence? Is the 33rd degree, and indeed its importance within secret society, a mere coincidence? We feel that although predictably claimed as Roman, the precision within their alignments, along with the inexplicable nature of the enormous megaliths involved in their construction, is undoubtedly evidence of a far more ancient, far more advanced constructor, and as such, highly compelling. We have in the past covered the remarkable legends and in particular the intriguing enormous tombs which cover the Mediterranean island of Sardinia, long claimed as the resting places of some 800 or so ancient giants who once belonged to a now lost race of beings. It is undeniable that the scale of these inner chambers is of considerable size, most capable of housing remains of a size of 15 feet or more in height. There are, undeniably, many compelling pieces of written reports, and indeed photographic evidence of the discovery of ancient giant remains. Yet nearly all seemingly vanish into thin air, 
many shortly following the mention of the involvement of certain academic institutions, such as the claim 3,000 or so remains claimed to have been excavated by Ralph Glidden on Santa Catalina Island, located within the Channel Islands during the early 20th century, all of which now lost. However, like the many ancient Uparts we share, there are that rare few which have fortunately made their way into the hands of private collectors or individuals lacking any agenda but that of revealing the truth of these objects' existence. And one such scenario involves that of a Luigi Muscus, a man who actually owns farmland on the island of Sardinia, upon which he claims to have found gigantic molars of a hominid appearance. In tandem with her appearance on the program Coast to Coast AM in the US, Paola Harris shared his extraordinary photos. After looking into the artifacts ourselves, we have indeed found an argument which will undoubtedly be used to dismiss the finds as that of ancient cave bear teeth. Yet the root patterning, and indeed crown of the molar like that of the partial jaw also shared seem to us to be more reminiscent of giant human skulls rather than the patterning of prehistoric bears. What's more, it must not be ignored that surrounding the claimed discovery site are indeed the aforementioned and gigantic ruins and the legends of individuals large enough to have once housed such teeth in their mouths, which all persist on the island to this day. What do you think? an ancient giant's molar and lower jaw, or simply that of the remains of a prehistoric animal. It is a legend and indeed series of discoveries which we find highly compelling. <laughs>